Lesson 4 for January 16 to 22, The Hard Way. Ready for teaching on the 23rd of January. Read by Dr. Percy Harold. Thursday, January 21. Gloom of the Ungrateful Living Dead. Our text for today is Isaiah chapter 8, verses 16 to 22. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait on the Lord, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells in Mount Zion. And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They will pass through it, hard-pressed and hungry, and it shall happen, when they are hungry, that they will be enraged and curse their king and their god and look upward. Then they will look to the earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. Question. Having read the above passage, what is it talking about? What has this to do with King Ahaz? Summarise your ideas. Ahaz was deeply involved in pagan religion, which was heavenly interconnected with the occult, as we read in Second Kings chapter 16, verses 3 and 4. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. And the same chapter, verses 10 to 15. Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet tiglath pileser king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest the design of the altar and its pattern according to all its workmanship. Then Urijah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the priest made it before King Ahaz came back from Damascus. And when the king came back from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and made offerings on it. So he burned his burnt offering and his grain offering, and he poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. He also brought the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. Then King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, On the great new altar burn the morning burnt offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering, and his grain offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their grain offering and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice, and the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. And Second Chronicles chapter 28 verses 2 to 4, for he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made moulded images for the Baals. He burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burned his children in the fire according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills and under every green tree. And verses 23 to 25. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which had defeated him, saying, Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, I will sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. So Ahaz gathered the articles of the house of God, cut in pieces the articles of the house of God, shut up the doors of the house of God, and made for himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every single city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, and provoked to anger the Lord God of his father. And Deuteronomy 32 verse 17, They sacrificed to demons, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, 
new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. And 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20, rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God, and I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. Various aspects of modern witchcraft have striking parallels in ancient Near Eastern rituals, as witnessed by ancient writings outside the Bible. Indeed, even many of today's New Age practices are simply contemporary manifestations of these ancient occult practices. Isaiah's description of despair resulting from reliance on spirits other than the Lord in Isaiah 8, 21 and 22, which we read earlier today, fits Ahaz well, as did Second Chronicles 28, verses 22 to 23. Isaiah refers to people becoming enraged and cursing their God, as we read in verse 21 of Isaiah 8. This would warn Ahaz that because he led the people into the occult, they would curse him. In fact, when Ahaz died, an exception was made regarding his burial due to lack of respect for him, as it said in Second Chronicles 28 verse 27, They did not bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel. Question. What do these texts say about the occult? Leviticus chapter 20 verse 27. A man or a woman who is a medium or who has familiar spirits shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. And Deuteronomy 18 verses 9 to 14. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead." For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God, for these nations which you will dis dispossess listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such to you. Separation from the occult is a matter of loyalty to God. First Chronicles 10, 13 and 14 applies this principle in the case of King Saul. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness. He was unfaithful to the Lord in that he did not keep the command of the Lord. Moreover, he had consulted a medium, seeking guidance, and did not seek guidance from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. And so to finish today, look around at your own life, at the influences around you. In what subtle ways are you exposed to the principles behind the occult and various manifestations of spiritualism? And even if you can't totally avoid them, what can you do to minimise their influence upon you or your family? Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.